folks. Not often I get in front of the camera. But what I'm going to show you today is a one of my long, longer winded videos. I'm going to be setting up this uh, three foot by basically six foot shelf system where I'm going to grow uh, microgreens. And I'll get into that system later. But I just want to show you, I'll be growing microgreens on these shelves. And then I'll also be doing some seed starting. This system I bought last year, I'll try to find the link to it and put it down below. And it was relatively inexpensive. In fact, it was very inexpensive. Three pieces to it. And I did start a lot of seeds in it, so I know it works. So one, you've got this. Now it's not heavy duty plastic. These other parts are a little better. You just have to take care of them and they'll last you many years. This, there's uh, 12 seed starter pits in it. What I like about these versus the, let me get you a sample again. And I don't have a great sample, but this is a peat pot. Now I, I have nothing against these pots for starting seeds in and then taking everything out. What I don't like is planting these. Will they work? Uh, yeah, possibly. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. What you usually get is a root bound plant. So instead of using these or those little pellets, the same problem with the pellets, these roots eventually come out. It's so much nicer to go with something like this. Now what this, you'll fill up uh, with a uh, organic starting mix which I have right here. I'm using Jiffy's, it's what I've used usually every year. It ain't cheap. I also have my own vermiculite and peat moss over there that we could be using, which I already paid for, and I have used that in the past. I used that in some of my sunflower starting, which you've seen in a previous video. Uh, and I won't be posting a link here or there because I don't know how to do it. So anyway, you'll fill these little trays up with the Jiffy seed starting mix. I'll try to put a link below to that. Okay, then they go in to this base unit where you can put enough water in the bottom. So it's not, it's right above the way this sits. So you put a little water in there and it keeps things damp. And then you have to cap the entire thing off. So then you've got the top and the top comes with, it's already pre-punched, a little hole in the middle. This plastic cap goes in the center hole pushes through there, you just heard the snap, and then you can adjust the amount of uh, moisture release that you want. These are the holes here, all four open, and I can start closing them. So you put your dirt in, put your seeds in, put them in the bottom, put this on, and you're starting. And what I'm gonna be doing here today throughout this video is I'm gonna be putting these I only bought two, I wanna see how they work. These are three foot LED lights, 3000 lumens. Um, it's a bright white 4000K. I'm hoping that will be good enough uh, to start it off. I got these at Home Depot. Uh, I don't have an affiliate account with them, so I will not be putting a link to it, but hopefully you can see that. It is the commercial electric LED shop light. What's neat about these, as you guys are, are, are familiar with uh, LED lights, the LED diodes are already built in. There's no light bulbs to replace. So that's a real great deal. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. I'm gonna be wiring in the first two of these. I'm gonna be setting it up uh, with a outlet plug so I can plug all the lights in. Uh, I may have to add, let me get one more thing to show you. And uh, I'll try to put a link down below for these heat mats. These are great. These are from Met. Uh, I've got one, two, three, I've got four heat mats. A couple of them are from Met and a couple others are from another retailer. But these things work great. I'm in a crawl space. It's, uh, it stays, in the summertime it gets a little more humid, but not so much, so much warmer. Right now it's it was 70 all day today. It's 65 in here. So it's a little cool. I've got a fan down below to keep circulation going. So I'm probably going to figure out how to wire these in here also because they will help germination. The, the seeds will germinate better, most of them. 
at around 70 degrees. 65 will work. You just get a little slower germination. Today is March 26th, I believe. And, uh, and so normally six to eight weeks before you're going to plant outside, you'll want to start most, not all, but most of your seeds indoors that you're going to transplant. Tomatoes, if you're doing peppers. What I'm going to be doing uh, first is some flowers. I got a bunch of flowers this year. We, uh, as you've seen, if you've been following, I've got a lot of fencing around the yard, so the deer will not eat my flowers this year. And I bought a number of perennials uh, that supposedly the deer don't like anyway. But regardless, uh, we're gonna, I'm putting a bunch of uh, flowers in and some vegetables. Some of the vegetables I'm probably not going to pre-start. Uh, pre peppers, for instance. I'm probably only going to have four to five pepper plants, green peppers or bell peppers. And then uh, I may have a couple of hot pepper plants, uh, jalapenos, and maybe a couple of the super hots, only because of the colorful peppers. So it's more of an ornamental thing, though I do have friends that will eat them. So that's what's going to be going on with the video today. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing set up, and then I'll cut the video on and off to show you the different processes that I'm going through. Looking forward to it. All right, just going to show you what's in the, the box for the light. You've got some mini hangers, literally mini. Instructions and one ready to go plug in light. Remove the styrofoam ends. There is a cord. Almost dropped it. There is a cord in the light. So theoretically, it will light up. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a regular six outlet adapter or extension cord, whatever you call this. It's not really a uh, surge suppressor, but I'm going to attach it halfway up this rig just put two screws actually these are the two screws that came with the lights but they work perfectly for these holes and i just kind of guesstimated where they would fit drilled them in and i know it would have been in because i already tested it once there we go and voila we have the power cord. Now, what I'll do is I'll run this. So what I'll do now is I'll run this up the side of the pole here. And I forgot to tell you, I'll get you a link. These are from Home Depot, but I think you can get them anywhere online. Uh, and I'll see if Amazon's got them. Uh, but I did get it at Depot. It's a 36 inch wide. Uh, I think, well, let me see. I don't have to think, I can tell you. 36 inches wide and 18 inches deep. A great planting shelf. So I'll run this up, tie it off, uh, and then we'll move on to the next the next step. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is attach these little holders that come with it. Kind of chinchy, but this is the easiest way to do it. Put a screw almost in the middle, as you can see here, and then there's a hook on the end which is going to hook into the light. All right, I decided the light was gonna to hang too low and it wasn't gonna work well the way I first showed you. So I went with hanging the screw on the outside and I went ahead and put a second screw so I could raise it up further as the plants grew. And I did that, of course, on both sides. So I'll be doing that on this next shelf and I'll check back with you when I get finished. Okay, one step closer, we've got the lights hung. Not perfectly balanced, but they're close enough. That's just because of the way they're hooked into the ends. I've got the cords. If I can stand up, they'll be tied up before it's over here. What I'm getting ready to do now is run an extension cord from the wall over here 
Hey, everything is just a little rigged in a basement. This is my workstation. <laughs> this is my man cave. I'll run it over here and down to here. And then I will connect it to the timer. Now, the timer will be for the lights, the uh, heat, heat mats. I think what I'm going to try first, I may, may have to share it uh, with the bigger trays. We'll just see. But long as uh, the trays are getting some of the heat, I think they'll be fine. So the heat mats will be permanently plugged in. The timer will cut the lights off and on. And I've just got to figure out where I'm going to mount it next. I'm thinking about somewhere at the top. We'll see. I'll check back with you in a minute. All right. So I've still got two more uh, trays to set up. But right now, I think this is enough in conjunction with my other setup over here. I've got two double fluorescents there for some stronger power um, in addition to a, a standalone greenhouse setup, which works very well. Been using that for growing uh, seeds for the chickens. But this whole area here is available primarily on the wood spot. I'm going to put a couple more double fluorescents on there and uh, then finish this grow out area, which will be more than enough to grow everything that I need to grow. But just to give you an idea what it looks like down here, the growing area is taking shape. This is going to be really nice. I'll set the timer for the lights. Uh, they usually run about 12 hours. I cut them on in the morning at seven. They'll go off in the evening at about that time. The lights over here are already off. They also run on a timer. I also have some Wi-Fi timers uh, that I can use and I will be using as I finish this setup to relieve uh, the stress on that one little manual timer. I really like the Wi-Fi timers. But anyway, folks, next time I'll show uh, what I'm planting. I'll go ahead and give you a heads up. These are some of the seeds that I'll be starting. Um, what have we got here? Four different tomatoes. I tried to get various um, ripen rates, and I ended up getting two cherry tomatoes, which I didn't want, but that's all right. They all had different, uh, different days. It's 85, 80, 70, 60. So the tomatoes will come out at uh, separate times. And then I have a bunch of perennial flowers that I'm going to be planting. Some tickweed, joe pie weed, uh, brown-eyed Susan. These are all perennials. Uh, pleurisy root milk is a milkweed. Apollo orange, which is another milkweed. Then purple coneflower, which is an echinacea. Echinacea, however, and then the last one is a aster, a tower silver peony type bloom. It says so. I've never planted any of these previously, so this will all be experiment. I hope they work. I'd love to see them come up each year and me not have to do anything but cut them back in the fall. So that's where everything is right now. Just uh, a quick update. The next I'll show you is some plants on the racks. Till next time.